The southernmost of the Seven Kingdoms is the most inhospitable and maybe the strangest to the men raised in the Reach, Westerlands, or King's Landing. The children of the forest called Dorne the Empty Land, and they weren't wrong. Dorne has vast deserts of red and white sand, huge mountains with treacherous passes, said to be guarded by treacherous people, stifling heat, sandstorms, scorpions, poisons, fiery food, castles made of mud, and dates, figs, and blood oranges. The eastern half of Dorne is mostly barren scrub, with dry, stony soil that yields little even when properly irrigated. Western Dorne, beyond Vath, is nothing but seemingly endless dunes and sandstorms that can strip the flesh from a man's bones within minutes. The Red Mountains make up Dorne's western and northern boundaries, and have aided in keeping Dorne separate from the rest of the realm for thousands of years, well also with the help of the deserts. Beyond these mountains, more than three quarters of Dorne's land is an arid wasteland. The southern coast of Dorne is nearly as bad, with snarls of reefs and rocks. There are no forests along the southern coast of Dorne, few farms, and fewer villages, and hardly any game to hunt. Fresh water is also not readily available on the southern coast of Dorne, and the seas south of Dorne are infested with sharks and krakens, and filled with whirlpools. And all of Dorne really has a bit of a problem with water supply. Most rivers in Dorne, unless flooded after a rare and dangerous rainstorm, are dry gullies. In the entirety of the region, only three rivers flow day and night, winter and summer, without drying out. The first is the Torotine, that flows high in the western mountains and plunges down to the sea in a series of rapids and waterfalls. It rises from the mountain springs, and its waters are described as sweet and pure, but incredibly dangerous to cross, and impossible to navigate. The second river, the Brimstone, is a calmer river with cloudy yellow waters that smell of sulfur. Plants that grow along the Brimstone's banks are often stunted and strange. And the third river is the Green Blood. Sometimes muddy, it is the most important river to Dorne. The waters of the Green Blood help both plants and animals, and the farms and orchards that grow from the riverbank go on for hundreds of leagues. Green Blood is also fairly easy to navigate by boat making the river chief for trade. Dorne has no cities. The closest to an actual city in Dorne would be Planky Town, at the mouth of the River Greenblood. But it is different than most Westeros cities, with planks instead of streets, and houses and halls and shops made from pole boats, barges, and merchant ships tied together and floating on the tide. Also, the mud and straw shadow city outside the walls of Sunspear is large enough to be a town, but not a city. Despite all the things said in this video that may make Dorne seem like not a fun place to live, the one thing Dorne can boast about is that their people are the oldest of the Seven Kingdoms of Westeros. The first men came afoot to Dorne over the land bridge from Essos. The remnants of this land bridge exist as the Stepstones and the Broken Arm of Dorne. The first men would first set foot on Westerosi soil on the eastern shores of Dorne. And if you want to hear more about the first men, the children of the forest, and what led to the breaking of the arm, you can watch our Dawn Age and First Men video. But the general story is this. The first men migrated to Westeros through the land bridge, and when they started cutting down trees and claiming land, it angered the children of the forest. A war started that eventually led, according to legend, to the children working dark magic to destroy the bridge between Westeros and Essos, creating the current broken arm. While that is a legend, many maesters believe that the sea simply swallowed up most of the arm. This most likely took centuries, and was caused by a series of long hot summers and short warm winters that melted the ice in the frozen lands beyond the Shivering Sea, causing the ocean to rise. There is even thought that the Sea of Dorne was once an inland freshwater sea, fed by the mountain streams until the narrow sea burst its bounds and drowned the salt marshes that lay between. Regardless, though, of how the arm broke, the first men had already stepped foot into Westeros first in Dorne, and the breaking of the arm wouldn't drive them out of Westeros. However, despite them first landing in Dorne, many that came to Dorne didn't stay there for long. Dorne's environment was too hostile for most of the first men. So harsh that even Garth Greenhand could not make flowers bloom in this environment, or so say the tales told in the Reach, even though Dorne's own stories never mention Garth. Garth Greenhand would lead his people through the mountains to settle the Furl Reach, and a lot of men would follow his lead and leave Dorne. But not all the first men left Dorne. Some men chose to settle the banks of the river they named Green Blood. And although it's not as big of a river as the Trident or Blackwater Rush, the Green Blood River is nevertheless considered the lifeblood of Dorne. 
These men saw beauty in Dorne and began to settle close to the green blood and dig canals and ditches to bring water to the trees and crops they planted. Other first men chose the eastern shores of Dorne to stay close to the sea and villages quickly arose, sustained on fish and crabs. And still other first men went further north and chose to settle in the foothills south of the Red Mountains, where a fertile green belt existed due to the storms moving north and dropping moisture. Some first men climbed even further and settled in the peaks, hidden valleys, and high mountain meadows where the grass was green. The more adventurous first men decided to travel inland across the desert. A few managed to find water in the dunes and raised holdfast and castles on their found oasis. The descendants of these first men would be called the Lords of the Wells centuries later. However, for every man that found a well, most likely hundreds died of thirst in the Dornish deserts. The Dornish would later be categorized into three distinct types by King Darren I Targaryen. The Stony Dornishmen, the Sandy Dornishmen, and the Salty Dornishmen. The Stony Dornishmen were those descended from both the First Men and the Andals. They had fair hair and skin and lived in the mountains. The Sandy Dornishmen lived in the deserts and river valleys, their skin a burned brown. And the Salty Dornishmen lived on the coast, had dark hair, olive skin, and had most of the Roynish blood. The customs of the Salty Dornishmen are also said to be the strangest. So join us every Wednesday and Sunday for Game of Thrones slash A Song of Ice and Fire content. Dorne and House Martell history will be for the next month to month and a half, and then we'll move on to a new history.